Good morning. Welcome back. Today is May 19th, 2022. We will be reading 1 Samuel 20 and 21, John 6, 1 through 21, Psalm 80, 8 through 19, Revelation 14, and Psalm 91. But if my father wants to hurt you, may the Lord do the same to Jonathan, and even more, if I do not let you know and send you away so you may be safe. May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. 1 Samuel 20, 13. When Jonathan supported David, he knew it meant he'd never sit on Israel's throne. He'd taken a dangerous step, but he loved and trusted his friend. Do you have a Christian friend you trust this way? If so, you have a blessed relationship. Give thanks to God for providing you with such a worthwhile relationship. What are your top three priorities today? What is on your schedule and to-do list? Write it down so you don't forget. What are your reflections on our Bible reading today? What do you want to remember from today? And how are you doing on your healthy journey? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this opportunity to read your word. Holy Spirit, I invite you in to do what only you can do. Thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. First Samuel 20 and 21. Then David fled from Naoth and Rama and went to Jonathan and asked, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to take my life? Never, Jonathan replied. You are not going to die. Look at my father. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without confiding in me. Why would he hide this from me? It is not so. But David took an oath and said, your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said to himself, Jonathan must not know this or he will be grieved. Yet, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. Jonathan said to David, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. So David said, look, tomorrow is a new moon festival and I am supposed to dine with the king. But let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at all, tell him David earnestly asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown, because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole clan. If he says very well, then your servant is safe. But if he loses his temper, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. As for you, show kindness to your servant, for you have brought him into a covenant with you before the Lord. If I am guilty, then kill me yourself. Why hand me over to your father? Never, Jonathan said, if I have the least inkling that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? David asked, who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Come, Jonathan said, let me out into the field so that they went there together. Then Jonathan said to David, by the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time the day to after tomorrow. If he is fair, favorably dis towards you will I not send you word and let you know but if my father is inclined to harm you may the Lord deal with me be it ever so severely if I do not let you know and send you away safely may the Lord be with you as he has been with my father but show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live so that I may not be killed and do not cut off your kindness from my family not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon festival. You will be missed, because your seat will be empty. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began and wait by the stone easel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it and as though I were shooting at a target. 
Then I will send a boy and say, go find the arrows. If I say to him, look, the arrows are on the side of you, bring them here, then come because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe. There is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then you must go because the Lord has sent you away. And about the the matter you and I discussed, remember the Lord is witness between you and me forever. So David hid in the field, and when the new moon festival came, the king sat down to eat. He sat in his customary place by the wall opposite Jonathan and Ab Abner sat next to Saul. But David's place was empty. Saul said nothing that day, for he thought something must have happened to David to make him ceremonially unclean. Surely he is unclean. But the next day, the second day of the month, David's place was empty. Then Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal either yesterday or today. Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me go get away to see my brothers. That is why he has not come to the king's table. Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan and he said to him, you son of a perverse and rebellious woman, don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he must die. Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father. But Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger on that second day of the month. He did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting with David. He had a small boy with him. He said to the boy, run and find the arrows. I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called out after him. Isn't the arrow beyond you? Then he shouted, hurry, go up quickly. Don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to his master. The boy knew nothing of all this. Only Jonathan and David knew. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said, go carry them back to town. After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept together. But David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, go in peace for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. Chapter 21, David went to Nob to Amalek the priest Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered, Ahimelech, the priest, the king charged me with a certain matter and said to me, No one is to know anything about your mission and your instructions. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, indeed, women have been kept from us as usual whenever I set out. The men's things are holy, even on missions that are not holy. How much more so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day that it was taken away. Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's head shepherd. David asked Ahimelech, 
Don't you have a spear or a sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's business was urgent. The priest replied, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah is here. It is wrapped in cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. That day, David fled from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart and was very afraid of Achish, king of Gath. So he pretended to be insane in their presence. And while he was in, he was there in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors and the gates and letting saliva run down his beard. Akish said to his servants, look at the man. He is insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring me the fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? Amen. John 6, 1 through 21. John 6, 1 through 21. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked his own he asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces of, of five barley lo loaves left over those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat. Walking on the water, they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they had been heading. Amen. Psalm 80, 8 through 19. Psalm 80, 8 through 19, which includes 80. Mommy's or Grandma's reading her Bible. You want to read my Bible with me? Hey, you want to read my Bible with me? 
Papa. I'm almost done, but I got to finish reading my Bible, okay? You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its bows to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it, and the creatures of the field feed on it. Return to us, O God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the root your right hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down. It is burned with fire. <laughs> you like that? At your rebuke, your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then, <laughs> you're so sweet. Uh, last mic. Uh, then we will not turn away ah. from you. Thank you. Revive us and we will and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Amen. 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 I like your little sharky sweatshirt. You look so cute. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> okay. Back to, let's see. Now we're going to move on to Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Then I looked, and there before was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. Okay, we can't do that right now. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bobby. I should have put that back. My coffee. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Grandma's going to have to warm that up. It's cold again. Um, I'm going to go back to, to verse. Uh, I don't know where I'm at. Mm. Oh, here we go. Uh, verse 4. No, Baba. Mm, I love you. I love you. Let's see. Verse 4. These, these are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased for among from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Careful. Cut this off. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and the springs of water. The second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great, which made all 
the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink the wine of God's fury which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath, and he will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence. I love you. I love you. In the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. And the smoke. What you doing, Bobby? Thank you. you. Yeah, no, no. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast. No, you don't need that, Baba. There's nothing in there for you. <laughs> no, you could probably take... <laughs> He's got a highlighter. <laughs> and the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast and his image or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord for now, from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud. Take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. <clears throat> excuse me another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him and had the sharp sickle take your sharp sickle and gather the cluster of grapes from the earth's vine because its grapes are ripe the angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and the blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridles from a distance of 1,600 stadia. Amen. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. He will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Thank you for joining me today, May 19th, 2022. We are finally all caught up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed and be a blessing to others. I'll see you tomorrow.